Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they'll be selling in their September of 2015 premiere auction. And one of the ones I noticed that I wanted to take a look at, because they're, they're pretty cool actually, is this M14E2 clone. Now, I say clone because the original M14E2 was a select fire rifle. It would have, in uh, today's legal system, it's a machine gun, it has to be registered, etc., etc. This gun is actually, technically, it's a Springfield M1A that has been built up to be a clone of the M14E2. Now you may be thinking this looks rather more like a light machine gun than the M14 typically is, and you would be correct. The E2 was a result of the Army's attempt to figure out some way to use the M14 as an effective light machine gun. Now originally the M14 was supposed to replace the M1 Garand rifle, and, in fact, they even designated and adopted an M15 rifle to replace the BAR. The M15 was basically an M14 with a bipod and a heavy barrel. Uh, this, the critical feature here being a heavy barrel, because it was intended to be used in much more sustained fire as a squad automatic weapon like the BAR, or an automatic rifle. Now, the M15 was officially designated and adopted in 1957. And only two years later, in 1959, you know, they were doing some testing and someone came to the conclusion that the thickness of the barrel wasn't actually all that important. What was important was how well uh, ventilated the handguard was so that the barrel could cool. And uh, the Marine Corps specifically took this and thought about it and decided this was a great excuse to just scrap the M15 and consolidate the whole program down to one fewer type of small arm. So in 1959, they officially declared the M15 obsolete before any of them had actually been built. There were, in fact, zero production M15 rifles ever made uh, before they were canceled. And what the Army ended up with instead, at, by the time M14 rifle production ended, what you had for a automatic rifle slash uh, squad automatic uh, weapon option was an M14 with a bipod. Now, they were trying to find some way to do better than that. Frankly, the M14 with a bipod is still a pretty lousy squad automatic weapon. Uh, accuracy was well below what was expected of it in burst fire. The option that was, the best option that anyone came up with was to put on a, a modified stock. So we have a pistol grip, we have a flip up butt pad uh, or butt plate to hold the, the, so you can pull the gun down into your shoulder. And we have a vertical front grip, which actually folds up when you're not using it. Now, it's not probably not directly obvious in this video, but the toe of this stock is actually significantly higher than that of a standard M1A or M14 rifle. So this does actually bring your shoulder support more in line with the bore than a standard M14. So that does help. The pistol grip does help, the, the front pistol grip does help. All these things improved the gun um, in full auto burst fire capability, specifically prone. Um, oh, I should say they also added a, uh, an improved uh, muzzle brake. They called it the E2 stabilizer. All of these things helped, none of them helped enough. Um, even in this guy's, it was really not a particularly effective automatic weapon. Uh, it was trialed against the M60 and this shouldn't surprise anyone, it lost horribly to the M60. This is, you know, an interesting thing. There are lots of problems with the M60, but when you set up for several hundred yards of automatic rifle firing, the M60 is just going to run circles around something like this, despite how sexy and cool this looks. So the, the trials against the M60 were held in 1963. In 1964, um, all of the the E2 conversions were actually done. That was a total of 8,350 of them. And then in 18, er, 18 in 1966, uh, the, the gun was formally redesignated from the M14E2 to the M14A1, giving it its final formal designation. These did see use in Vietnam. Um, in fact, there's actually interestingly some video footage of Walter Cronkite reporting on some activities in Vietnam where there are some troops in the background, obviously, very clearly shooting. E2 or A1 uh, rifles. All right, we've got the history pretty well in hand, I think. Why don't I bring the camera back and let's take a little bit of a closer look at some of these unusual features. All right, we'll start off here just by pointing out that this is, in fact, a Springfield M1A receiver. So 
semi-auto only, legal for virtually anybody to own, which is pretty cool. Now, we do have a nice cartouche here on the stock, and this is an original M14 E2 stock. It's interesting to note that uh, you can see a splice here in the pistol grip, because this was made out of two pieces of wood. Uh, interestingly, the stocks were actually manufactured up in Toronto, Canada, because by the time they were ordered, uh, the US uh, Winchester plant was shut down and didn't have an easy way to set up to make these. Now, the front grip is kind of interesting, actually. It does have its own built-in sling swivel, which replaces the one that would have been out there on the rifle. The grip folds down, and it doesn't have any positive forward stop until you get way out to here. It does have a rearward stop right there, and it has this plunger on the inside. So I can pull this plunger up to snap it back into the stowage position. Now the way this was supposed to originally be used was that you would actually have another quick detach sling hook right about here on the sling. You would fold the grip down and you would hook the sling to it right about there. That would give you a little bit of forward tension on the uh, pistol grip and pulling back on the sling prevented it from moving. So that's how this forward grip was intended to be used. Um, this sling is mostly correct, except it's missing that little buckle. Now it's a standard buckle, that's easy enough to add. Another interesting element here is the, uh, they call this the E2 stabilizer. This is a replacement muzzle device. Now I haven't taken this off, but it appears this may have been a California compliant uh, M1A without any actual slots in its muzzle brake. But originally this would have acted to redirect the volume of gas coming out the muzzle brake. This kind of goofy looking contraption held in place by a screw and nut, and that's actually the original thing. That's how the military did it. This is just clamped in place on the original bayonet lug and uh, does its thing. Apparently this was reasonably effective. It's not world changing, but it does help a little bit. Now we also have our bipod can be extended here, and then this button allows it to lock up in place, like so, for when you're not, not using it. Push the button, snaps down. Frankly, you know what? That's actually pretty similar to the Japanese uh, Nambu light machine gun bipods. I should point out, this does appear to have a full auto switch, but it's not actually a switch. This is uh, aesthetic and decorative only, and does not actually function. So. It's there to make the gun look right. On an actual original M14, A1, or E2, this would have been your selector switch to go from semi-auto to full auto. Right. And last but not least, we have a uh, rubber covered butt plate here that has this fold up uh, shoulder plate. So this allows you to pull the gun down into your shoulder, which helps for controllability. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, this isn't a particularly common M M14 configuration to find. And frankly, the fact that this is actually a semi-auto M1A uh, clone in many ways makes it more interesting and desirable to those of us who maybe don't have the pocketbooks for actual registered full auto M14s, um, which are really orders of magnitude more expensive than a, a converted semi-auto clone. So. If you think this is just the coolest thing you've ever seen and you can't live without it, well, go ahead and take a look at the link in the text description below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page for this rifle. You can take a look at their pictures, their description. You can go ahead and create an account online, place a bid, or come down here and participate live in the auction and make this thing yours. Thanks for watching. So reports of my hatred for the M14 are dramatically exaggerated. It's simply that I would prefer to acknowledge what the gun truly is rather than what the army wanted it to be. This is really cool.